In this video, I'm going to focus on the limitations of ratio analysis. I've already made a video on ratio analysis and this video has got more than 42,000 views as we speak. So I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for this wonderful support you have given me over the years. So I highly recommend that you watch this video of mine on ratio analysis, which will help you how ratios are calculated. But in this video, we are going to focus on what are the limitations of ratios? So the very first one is that ratios mostly do not factor in the effect of inflation. So if I give you an example, let's say in an inflationary period, if I compare year one with year two, in year two, because of inflation, the cost of input, the cost of production has gone up. And if the cost of production has gone up, the company's management decided that they're not passing it on to the customers, so they'd never increase the selling price. So if they don't increase the selling price and the production cost has gone up, that means the gross profit margin will be less as compared to previous year. And ratios, when you calculate the gross profit ratio, which is one of the profitability ratios, you will get, let's say last year it was 30%, now it is 25. So the analyst will comment that the gross profit ratio was 35 and now it is 25, so the company's performance has gone down. In reality, it is not the company's performance, it is a management decision and the effect of inflation which has not been factored in by the analyst. Another reason why ratios may mislead us is the adoption of accounting policies. So let me give you an example. When we talk about accounting policies, as you know that accounting concepts and conventions and standards are flexible and if I talk about my favorite return on capital employed, the formula is net profit divided by capital employed. Now when you calculate capital employed, it is total assets minus current liabilities. So assuming net profit is 50,000 and your capital employed happens to be 500,000, so it gives you 10% return on capital employed. How does accounting policy affects this? So assume in year one, uh, your capital employed was 500,000 and in year two, the profit remains the same, but you chose to revalue your assets, you know, as per I-16, okay? And what happened in year two, when you revalued your assets, obviously when I say capital employed, when I say total asset, it has non-current assets as well as current assets. So in non-current assets, if one of the non-current assets you revalued and uh, the effect of revaluation is that your total capital employed because of increase in non-current asset because of revaluation comes to 1 million. So now return on capital employed is 5%. When you calculate ratios, uh, return on capital employed in year one is 10%, in year two is 5%, that shows the analyst and the potential investors that the company's return on capital employed is going down. Actually, it's not. It is just because the companies chose an accounting policy from cost model, they went to revaluation model, and as a result, there has been some changes in the accounting ratios. So please understand, when you calculate ratio and the ratios are showing you a declining effect, a declining trend, that does not necessarily mean that the company is not performing. Another issue with ratio analysis is that most of the time when we are calculating ratios, we are using the year-end figures like closing stock balance, like account receivable year-end balance. So these year-end balances are not the true representative of the figures for the entire year. So if they are not, then how come the ratios can be representative of the company's performance? Another issues or limitations of ratios is because of IS24, which is related party transactions. Now, I'll be making a video soon on IS24, but at the moment, let me tell you, related priority transactions are those transactions which a company does with related parties. For example, their directors, uh, their key suppliers, or probably their employees. And obviously, when I say it's a related party transaction, that means the terms of the transactions were not the same as it would have been for anybody else. It is assumed that in financial statements, 
the uh, concept of arm's length is taken care of. That means that the transactions are done the same way as the company does it for anybody. No special favors uh, and uh, concessions have been given. But in IS24, yes, if it's a related party transaction, it is not an arm's length transaction. There has been some special concessions. When I say some special concessions, that this means that these transactions will affect the overall ratios and numbers of the company. So if you compare with year one with year two, in year one there has been no related party transaction, in year two there has been some related party transaction. So how can we compare ratios of two years which do not show consistent figures? Another uh, issue when we calculate ratio is that generally in ratios we do recommend that you compare a company's ratio with uh, the same company's last year ratios, you know, we compare with last year figures, we compare with industry averages. So when we talk about industry and we are comparing two companies within the same industry, their figures, their numbers are not always comparable. Why? Because it is true that two companies belong to the same industry, they are into the same business, but they may have different risk profiles. There are different variables and factors which are affecting one company within the same com industry, uh, but which is not affecting the other. So when we compare ratio, it may not always give us the correct information. Why? Because two companies, even if they are in the same industry, they may have different risk profiles, they may have different, uh, you know, variables which are affecting their performance, hence their ratios cannot be compared. Another issue when we talk about ratio analysis is, obviously, we calculate ratios looking at the financial statements and financial statements are subject to manipulation, are subject to creative accounting, or window dressing. I have created a uh, video on uh, the limitations of financial statements where I have discussed in detail how creative accounting is done. If you want to know more about it, please make sure you watch this video of mine on limitations of financial statements so that you understand how companies do creative accounting. If the financial statements are a victim of creative accounting and you are taking figures from the financial statements and calculating ratios, what purpose these ratios will serve? Now what analysts and uh, potential shareholders or investors should do? Obviously they have to keep in mind about these limitations and factor all these when they are doing their analysis. But beyond that, if I give you a pro tip, you also have to look at the non-financial aspects of the companies. Number one, how technologically advanced the company is, the company which you are about to invest. Why are you doing ratio analysis? Because you want to calculate ratio and look at the financial strength and viability of the investment or the company. So it is always good to go one step ahead. Look at the non-financial aspects. Is the company technologically advanced? how technologically advanced the company is. Is it keeping abreast with the technology in the industry? If not, they will be pushed out of competition. You know what happened with Nokia phone. Once upon a time, they were the biggest brand, the hottest selling products. Now, they did not change with technology, so smartphones took over the market. Same is the case with, with most of the cab industries in the world uh, ever since the introduction of Uber and Kareem. So, when you talk about Kareem and Uber, these were simply apps. They, they, these were disruptive technologies, they changed the game. I mean, it was a game-changing technology. Now, most of the t uh, in most of the countries, cabs do not operate the same way. Uh, the old cab drivers are out of business. So, you have to see, if you're calculating ratios of a company, check the non-financial aspect. As I told you, technology is one of them. Another key aspect when we talk about non-financial considerations, uh, when we are looking at the financial statements of a company, and in order to avoid the drawbacks and limitations of ratio is how much importance the company is giving to environment, sustainability, corporate governance, and social responsibility. Let me tell you, customers and prospective customers and potential customers are not the same as before. They would like to be socially responsible ethically responsible, environmentally responsible. Customers are even willing to pay more and spend more 
uh, on products of companies which are into ethics, which are into protection and saving of environment, which are into uh, sustainable products, which are into, uh, you know, very transparent management. So even if financial ratios are very promising and the companies are not performing in these areas, so in the long run, the company is destined to fail. You see, companies who do not pay a lot of attention to environment, to ethical investments, like when I say ethical investment, let me give you an example. If you are a customer, would you like to support a company which makes guns or which makes medicines? You know, investment is required for both. You're manufacturing guns, you're manufacturing medicines. So when you're manufacturing guns, what it is used for? It's used for destruction. People would say that it's used for safety, yes, but most of the time we see guns are used for destruction. When we're talking about medicine, these are life-saving drugs. So would you support a company and be a shareholder of a company which makes guns or which makes medicine? The choice is yours. Most of the time, these days, investors would like not only to get profit, but to get profits ethically. But when you just do simple ratio analysis, it only tells you whether the company is performing or not. So financial statements don't show that whether the company was ethically responsible or not, whether the company, uh, you know, contributed towards environment safety, so on and so forth. Another important area with financial ratios don't cover is the reputation of the management of the company. Is the management of the company is known for its integrity or they are known to be frauds. They are known to be people who do not fulfill their responsibilities, who do not fulfill their commitments, who do not comply with rules and regulations. Another thing you have to look at is, what is the reputation of the company as an employer? Are they employer of choice? Or the labor turnover ratio is huge in the company. That means people like workers don't want to work for the company as and when they get an opportunity they leave and go if that is the case as i said workers are the people who make or break the company but these things are not reflected when we calculate ratios another point which relates to the management of the company and the reputation is how far and to what extent they have been successful in accomplishing their mission statement you know normally companies will have a mission statement it is our mission to be the best brand in the world uh, you know making consumer products which you know meets consumer demands at a low price producing high quality we want to be employer of the choice now all this is in the mission statement but to what extent the company has been successful in achieving this so this is a litmus test shows you so much about the company's future whether they will keep the promises they make and all these things are not reflected when you calculate your ratios so these are some of the limitations the next important area we need to look at is what is the market size of the company the, the company may show good ratios, good financial numbers, but if the market size is small, it's not growing. That means there is no future prospect of growth for the company. They may have grown over the years, but future growth is restricted because of the market size. We also have to look at something which is not reflected in the ratio analysis is that what is the level of competition the company has? Is there a risk of hostile takeover? Because if there is a risk of hostile takeover, new management will come with their own fancy ideas that may not produce the same results which you are seeing in their ratios. So when it comes to hostile takeover, I want to remind you that I have created a video uh, which discusses all the uh, different types of hostile takeover and also what defenses a management uh, of a company may have to counter the hostile takeover. If you are interested in that, I have given the example of Twitter as well. When Elon Musk was buying Twitter, they used one of the strategy which is known as poison pill. So Twitter management used poison pill uh, for Elon Musk and they wanted uh, him to, you know, just forget about buying Twitter. So that is also mentioned and discussed in this video. I highly recommend that you watch this. So guys, if you have understood the limitations of ratios, if you have any important point, 
or concerns relating to uh, the limitations of ratios feel free to leave a comment i will reply to you if you like this video please share it with your dear and near ones so that others can also benefit thank you so very much for your precious time love you all